just to give way to what the Holy Spirit wants to do. Yes, we come in prepared. We come in with a schedule. But we always have to give the Holy Spirit, because this is about Him. Amen? This is about the Lord. It's not about what we want to do. It's about worshiping the Lord. It's all about worship. And, you know, it's, it's so important that we don't um, confine the definition of worship to a schedule. And so when the Lord begins to just move in a different direction, we allow the Holy Spirit to move there. And that's where heaven uh, begins to descend and then break out on the earth. That the way that the Lord was praying that heaven would be released on earth. And so, you know, this morning, <clears throat> if you went to Facebook, you saw my notes for um, controlling the mind, but if you would allow me this morning to kind of change direction. Okay. Um, even in the last moment, I just wanted to share a, a brief thought that the Lord you know, during the service, it was just kind of impressing upon me. And, um, you know, I take these little notes in my, in my pad, and I came across our prophetic purpose, something that I had written in here. And it says, understanding our inheritance begins with discovering the deeper purpose of our salvation. Understanding our inheritance begins with discovering the deeper purpose of our salvation. Many new believers stay immature because they never progress beyond the revelation that they are sinners saved by grace. Come on, you know what I'm talking about? That sometimes we kind of stay in that place of where we were forgiven and we encounter the Lord in our life. And the Lord gives us forgiveness. The Lord sets us free of bondage. And we remain in that place throughout our seasons with the Lord, not allowing ourselves to go forward. By progress, I don't mean to leave behind, but to build upon. Amen? We're not just going to leave behind the grace of the Lord, but we're going to build upon that. That those who progress are those who understand that God's highest purpose for the cross was not merely to forgive us of our sin. It was so that by forgiving us on the basis of Christ's blood, he could invite us back into an intimate family relationship with him. Our heavenly father, John chapter 1 and verse 12 says this, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. This legal standing of relationship that the Lord has given to us when we came to salvation, that our relationship with God as sons and daughters is precisely what gives us an inheritance. The fact that the Lord has received us and forgiven us, it's not just for the point of remaining in that place and not knowing what to do from there on and just dwelling on the fact that it, and in the past we were sinners and now that we're saved, but it is the fact that we understand that there is an inheritance. Everybody say the word inheritance. Amen. We live in the inheritance of Jesus Christ. We are part of the family of God. You know, I'm, I'm always reminded of the parable of the prodigal son. We all know the parable of the prodigal son, right? This, the younger son takes his inheritance and, you know, he goes off to a far country. He wastes it there. At one point, he comes to... You know, his understanding, you know, he comes back to the point of realizing, hey, my father's servants have it better than me. I'm going to go back and just ask my father if I could just be a servant in his house because it's much better than the pig pen that I find myself in here. Come on. 
And so he runs back, and what happens? We see in the scriptures that his father from afar off saw him coming, and he runs to greet his son, and he embraces him. Now listen, forgiveness was so important in that relationship. It was so important for the father to give his forgiveness to his son and that his son would receive forgiveness. That's, a, that's another sermon right there. That when the father offers us his forgiveness for something that we've fallen on, that we receive it. Everybody say, I receive it. Come on, I receive it. That we receive what the Holy Spirit gives to us in the process of forgiveness. That we understand and we're not just walking around with this guilt trip upon us. You know, thinking that, you know, God, well, you know, this, God can't, you know, can't forgive this sin. You know, I went much too far on this one. I don't see anywhere on the cross where Jesus said, you know, Lord, forgive them. And then he says, but, you know, these particular sins are not forgiven. No, no, no. He forgave everything. When he said it's finished, it was finished. And so when he offers us forgiveness, it's pure forgiveness. And the son receives it. The son receives it. But, you know, there, there's something now that needs to take place. And if the son remains in that spot in which he embraced the father and the father goes back to his house, to his everyday business, and the, and the son just remains there, there is no inheritance that's there. Amen? So what does the father do to remind him that he's still a son? Everybody say, I'm a son or I'm a daughter. Come on, say it the way you are. I'm a son or I'm a daughter. Sons and daughters of God. He had to come to the realization that he's still a son. Yeah, he went off. Yeah, he messed up. Yeah, he broke his, you know, his, his, uh, uh, his, his family relationship at that point with his, with, with his, with his brothers, with, 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 uh, with the servants of the house, you know, the respect that he had with his father. And he ran off and he did his thing. And man, he fell flat on his face. But he had to come to the realization when he embraced the father and the father opened up his arms to him that there was forgiveness in his life. And so now he can't just stand where he is because he's going to be outside of the house. Everybody say, when you stand where you are, you're going to be outside of the house. Go ahead. If I stand where I am, I'm going to be outside of the house. I have to go into the house. Everybody say, I have to go into the house. And so what does the father do to remind him that he's a son? He said, bring the best robe and put it upon him. Put the ring on his finger. Close his feet with the right sandals with shoes on his feet. In other words, uh, he was letting him know, listen, you are part of this household. You have an inheritance of what we have here. And you will go forward as a son in my house. As believers in Jesus Christ. And we come to that point of being forgiven of our sins. It is the point of salvation. Listen to me. That it is important that we don't just look at grace as something that is behind us. But it's understanding that we build on the process of grace. We build on grace. And we understand that as the inheritance that the Lord has given to us. We don't have to wait till we die and go to heaven to receive inheritance. As a son and a daughter, I share in the inheritance of the house uh, as I'm part of the household. Amen? Amen? And so I want to leave this with you this morning. That maybe you're walking around with this guilt trip. That somehow you, what you did was just so bad. That maybe you're just not good enough. And, you know, we look at people that can sing and say, well, I can't sing like that. Or somebody that is proficient in speaking and say, well, I can't speak like that. Or somebody that is talented in certain areas or can do certain things or, you know, it's very relational. They're clicky people. You know, they, you, you finally, you, you constantly find them with people. They're surrounded by people. They're those kind of people. And sometimes we're standing on the outside looking in at these different things and saying, you know, I can't do that. I'm not good enough. And it probably is because of my past, of all the things that I did. And, you know, yes, I know the Lord forgave me and gave me salvation, but he can never use me because of, you know, I'm just not good enough as this other person. That's a lie from the devil. Everybody say I'm good enough. Because of Jesus' blood, I'm good enough. And so, we build upon grace. Yeah. To everyone 
whom he called. The Bible says he justified. Yeah, I'm justified by faith. The Holy Spirit called me. He called me for a purpose. He didn't call me to wait outside, to stand in that place in which I was forgiven, but I'm constantly tormented and looking back and thinking that I can't go forward. No, but in the family of God, we have an inheritance. We're sons and daughters. I'm entitled to everything in my Father's house. And so I believe that's what the Holy Spirit was doing this morning. He was releasing the joy of the Father's house. The healing of the Father's house in us. Healing in body. Healing in mind. Healing in relationships. Healing in finances. Where you were broken and the enemy stole from you. It was never given to the enemy. Hello? Yeah. That the Lord restores and not just that amount of God fourfold and sometimes even tenfold what the enemy has stolen from us. Stand with me. I just want to encourage you this morning to go forward, to build upon grace. To build upon it. Stop looking back. The Father has embraced you. The Father has embraced you. You're a son and you're a daughter of the house in forgiveness. And we build upon that. I'm sure the Bible doesn't say so that the prodigal son went inside and he just went to his hammock, put a straw in his mouth, and walked back and forth. He still was responsible for what was going on in the house. He was still responsible for his portion. And I want to tell you something else. Maybe you've gone out after salvation and you wasted your portion. You wasted it on something that the enemy just took you to the ends of the earth. And you, find your, and you found yourself wallowing and you came back. The Father has forgiven you. And you feel that your portion is gone. I want you to know the Father's house never runs out of the portion. Your Father's house never runs out of the portion. There's a reason why he went back. He knew that the portion in his Father's house was great. Yeah. And so this morning, come on, every head bowed, every eye closed in this place. It's a little bit different than what we're used to. I believe the Holy Spirit had a word for us this morning. I'm a son. I'm a daughter. Well, that song that we sing about the champion, there's that one verse in there, there's that one little phrase that says, I am who you say I am. Yeah. Yes. Doesn't matter what the devil says. The Bible says he's the accuser of the brethren. But I am who you say I am, Jesus. Come on, say it. I am who you say I am. Go ahead, repeat it. I am who you say I am. I'm not going to stand in my spot of where I originally received grace. I'm going forward and I'm going to build upon it. Father, I thank you this morning that the Holy Spirit has set our minds free so that we're not entangled in the yoke of bondage in our mind. Father, for everyone here that has been broken, wounded, stolen from, from the enemy, you're stronger. You're greater. You are the restorer of the portion. 
Because, Lord, you are our portion. You are my portion, the psalmist says. So, Father, I pray this morning, restore to your children what the enemy has stolen. If they are void of joy, God, restore joy abundantly and full of glory in their lives. If he's stolen from their finances, God, this morning, by faith, we step forward and plant the seed to reap the harvest of what you have blessed us, of what you have blessed us in our life. Father, if he has stolen a wife, a husband, through bitterness. Father, I pray this morning that the oil of intimacy would be restored between husbands and wives, sons and daughters, parents and children, brothers and sisters. family members within the church with each other, God. We may be different colors. We were born under a different kind of a nationality, but we have the same blood running through our veins, the blood of Jesus Christ. And so I pray for that unity to unite us. Remind us of our inheritance. Remind us that we're sons and daughters. Yeah. We leave this place saying, it has been good to have been in your presence, God. Yes. And we take our portion with us in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.